coming up, we've just seen Beauty and the Beast, and we need to talk about it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In yeah. this episode of Disney. Pop is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. Experts at helping you plan the perfect vacation. Visit them on the web at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everybody. I am your host, Rhino Clavin, joined by Craig Williams over here. Yes. And uh, we're, just, we're just going to dive right into it because we went to the, uh, the, the um, not the midnight showing, but the 8.30 p.m. showing uh, last night of Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. We decided to sleep on our thoughts, and here we are today. Yes. And... Um, we are recording this on location right now, so oh, don't yeah. be alarmed with that's the background noise if you're listening to this. And that's we, why it's so bright as well yeah. if you're watching. So it's very sunny out here, but we're, we're, we're hiding in the shade and shame at exactly. the ice cream place, at the cupcake place. Yeah, so obviously this is the reimagining of the classic beloved 1991 animated feature of mm-hmm. the same name. Uh, Beauty and the Beast has been, uh, you know, just done throughout time in many different ways there's been it's a tale as old as time it is a tale as old as time uh they've they've been in many different forms and media in other movies in, in tv oh yeah tv yeah um and i will just jump right into it of all the ones i've ever seen before this was the most unnecessary and the hardest to actually sit through I would I would wager to say the most unoriginal of all of them too because they you've got the classic Beauty and the Beast TV show that has to do with like the cop and her and then there's the one that was like the remake of that on the CW yeah and then there you know obviously the Disney animated classic this is pretty much a more or less beat for beat remake of that with the exception of some added stuff so rather than go over the plot because everybody knows the plot yeah it's, it's the, the plot's the same yeah it's the it is literally the exact same plot as the animated Disney version, but they do add several extra songs and ways to uh, bring out a little bit more exposition in the actual film. Uh, so it's not just a shot-for-shot remake. We're going to talk about some spoilers because yeah. the, the issues the, the issues I have have to do with some stuff that you won't know till the end, so just be warned. Um, so should we start with what's actually good in the movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. We'll be positive. So, um... Well, you start then. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll, think about it. I'll start by saying um, I really thought that Josh Gad did a great job as LeFou. Yes. Uh, he, spot on casting there. Yeah, is spot on casting. He is a great singer. I mean, we've seen him as Olaf, you know, heard him in the Book of Mormon. He is a wonderful singer, and he I could not imagine anyone else in the role of LeFou. He is the no. perfect yeah. character for it. Um Every, his comedic timing was perfect. Uh, just again, I, I can't say anything. He, he bad understands, about it. you know, he understands a musical. He understands the movement, yeah. the motion. He understands movies. It's he's a talented guy, and he's a physical performer too. Yeah. So his dancing spot on. He is just every time he's on screen, he is a joy to watch. And I guess we have to talk about the exclusively gay moment. In it. Yeah. Well, that see, that's in my both positive and negative. Where it's like, okay, I, what, you know, when some, if somebody were to turn to me and say, like, well, LeFou's kind of gay, and you'd be like, yeah, I could see that. He's kind of obsessed with Gaston, but then you're like, well, or is he just kind of like looks up to him and whatever? Like this movie is like, okay. Oh he's, no. He's he's, he's no, gay. He's straight up gay the entire movie. And I, yeah. I apologize. You know, I am straight a heterosexual male. Um, <laughs> that is happily married to my beautiful wife and Stephen, and I, <laughs> I clearly have many gay friends. So I apologize if this comes off as harsh in any way. But LeFou is straight up gay throughout the entire yeah, movie. It's and then very obvious in Gaston. And then in the, song. the one, the one time that they said is the exclusively gay moment is the least gay thing he does the entire movie. Yeah, yeah. if there had not been a deal, a big deal made out of it ahead of time, it's not even something I think I would have looked for. I would have just been watching it and been like, oh, because because it's it's. You, I mean, do you want to talk about yeah. what the moment is? So the moment is in the final scene. They are all ballroom dancing. Uh, at the at the castle mm-hmm. and he is dancing with a lady literally the entire time during the dance yeah. and then 
there's one second where like a guy actually steps in with him and his eyes just get big as if he is shocked that it actually happened. Like, whoops, this was a mistake. You know, because yes. it's the it's the moment when like in a ballroom dance, I guess, where you switch the partners. And, yeah. you know, and so I think it was just a like a switching mistake. So any movie I would have been like, oh, ha, ha, funny. Like, yeah, if anything, I thought know, it was an exclusively gay bashing moment where he's like, nope, no, nope, yeah. not having any of this. Yeah, and, and that was it. And it, it even pans out to a wide shot after that. And you can't see LeFou and the guy together. So no. who, you don't even know whether they stay together. It, from the looks of it, it doesn't seem like they, like, oh, they got together. It's because it's the same character that earlier in the film, the wardrobe tran- uh, transforms three of the men during the mob scene. Yeah. One of them, they all get wrapped up in dresses, and the one, like, has the moment where he's like, he feels pretty. Yeah. You know, and you're like, I thought that was just kind of like a joke or whatever. I didn't think that that it was, was very Ed Wood. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was very Ed Wood. Um, um, but yeah, that was, you know, despite all that, uh, you know, because there was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of discussion around LeFou and his character and all that. Regardless of all of that, Josh Gad was the standout, yeah. the standout winner in this. And I will even say that Luke Evans, not as a singer, but his character yeah. of Gaston, he did a good job of playing the part. Yeah. Um, he did, yeah, he, he did a great job with what was given to him. Yeah. You know, it was kind of like he is Gaston that we remember, but he also, they tried to add this other element about he's kind of returned from war and yeah. he doesn't really know what to do. You know, he doesn't really have a place. Yeah, he has he, this they never, That storyline never PTSD. plays out very well. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> But he basically is a man that needs that aggression and that he needs, he feeds on that, yeah. which we already knew. And I actually thought, like, in the beginning of the movie, when they kind of introduced that plot, I was like, oh, this will play out well later. Maybe he'll be redeemed. Nah. Nah. No. Nah. Nah. No. Nah. But. It just made him even worse later on. He, he was arrogant. He was confident the entire time. He was exactly what Gaston should be. But still, I won't, he was not a good singer. And his character had no depth to it at all, but that's that's one of my big cons with this movie, is no character has any depth yeah. to it. it Craig is. doesn't like Gaston singing. I will say that I don't, of all the people in the movie, other than Josh Gad, obviously, who is the singer, I, I actually don't mind Luke Evans' version, like his Gaston, or the, the mob song is probably my favorite song in the film, but... Um, but, but, you know, again, everybody's auto-tuned. Well, d- yeah. Do we have any more positives to say about it? Um, I like the costume design. Yeah. Yeah. Th- um, I thought the costume design was good. Not the I, character design. I can't... <laughs> we can't mix that up. No. Um, but I thought those were, like, very true to the animated, but also kind of trying to be its own... Yeah, yeah. With its own little spin on it. It was very ornate. It was very beautiful. Very similarly to the, uh, the reimagining of Cinderella. It had that same... That same pretty look to yeah. it. Um, if only it passes the squint test. Yeah. You know, if you're three feet away and you squint, you could t- still tell immediately what it is. But when you get up close, it's added this like incredible layer of detail. Yeah. If any, in um, if anything, they could have benefited greatly by actually making the character designs more flowing with the costume designs. And I know they do kind of go hand in hand. But there was just there was a clear distinction between what the artists were trying to do and what the yeah. costume designers were trying to do, and it didn't it didn't flow well for me. Yeah. But well, let's get into the rest of the movie then. Okay. <laughs> on on to the bad. Yeah. So uh, the my okay. So the 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 original feature, the original animated feature, is one of the only. Well, Craig points out it was the only animated feature that was nominated for Best Picture when it was only the five yes. in the category. And then later up was nominated... Was Toy Story 3? No, just okay, up. Okay, just up. Um, but um, when they added the 10, that is. So the movie, uh, the original movie is excellent alone. And it's got a very brisk pace, you know, so it's 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 90 minutes long. Um, this movie obviously wants to add a little more backstory of what it attempts to. And... For me, a major issue during this movie is the pacing of the film. It takes a yeah. long time to get into, like, it's not a story people don't know, especially when you're retelling the Disney one. So it's kind of like it hinges on these moments that it's supposed to be like a surprise. And I guess you should make the film for people that have never seen it before. However, you're like, the, the, the drawn out to get 
to where they needed yeah. to get to, it took too long oh, by it, adding it the did. extra scenes. And in. the problem is because you are so aware of the animated movie that you know what to expect next. So it's like, you know, the movie starts off as quickly as you want it to, gets right into Bell, just like it needs to, mm. and then it felt like forever to get to the reprise. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, well, then everything happens to lead up to it. So next I'm going to be waiting for uh, Be Our Guest. And then it felt it like it took long time. forever to get to I Be Our Guest. I do have a big issue with Be Our Guest. And then well. <laughs> you're like, okay, well, waiting for something there. Yeah. It takes a long time to get to that. And then not so long to get into Beauty and the Beast, but then it's, well, how long is it going to take to get to the freaking mob song, man? And right. it just... It felt like the moments in between the songs were taking it, it, so long. They added stuff to the wrong parts. Like, they yeah. should have added more to the Beast and Belle falling in love, I, I would say, as opposed to, like, Maurice's backstory. So Maurice is no longer an inventor. He's, I don't know what he is, an artist. He builds what appears He's, to be music boxes or something. I don't know. But, so he doesn't really have that story. And he still leaves to go and to the market and gets caught up yeah. in everything. He leaves with literally one music box. <laughs> He's got a... Just one. It's the, it's the, what hinges on their mortgage? The one music <laughs> box. Once a quarter. And so... Um, yeah, so he gets caught up in, this, in the same way he yeah. gets caught up before. The wolves are still there. Don't worry about that being missing. Okay, yeah. so I, I should I should backtrack a little bit. There's an opening, um, the the prologue yes. um, with the narration is is here and done, and you see what she's talking about: the beast having the party and re- and refusing the traveler. Yeah, and it's done in a weird way where I'm like, I almost wish they had just turned that into dialogue and removed the narration. Yeah, because this was the first moment that I started cracking up laughing. And the yeah. movie was only on for about two minutes at that point, well, but it was like it was like a YouTube video, like Drunk History, almost, where like the person's giving the narration, yeah. and then they're like the person on screen is tasked with acting it out. And it's like, oh, the enchantress for some reason just magically starts swirling up yeah. in, a, in a bright yeah. light of color. <laughs> and you're like, okay, no, no well, words they'll be for like, that. oh, the beast refused her, and then Dan Stevens on screen goes like, hmm. And you're like, oh, I guess he did refuse her. Yeah, well, but like, he, he so refused her. It was a weird... They did correct that issue of it being like a 10-year-old prince, though, that this stranger danger yeah. is yeah. playing yeah. under in this, in this one, they fixed it. And one of the plot points that I actually don't mind that they tried to give a little bit more backstory on, all the characters were the age uh, that they are when they get turned, and they stay that age. There is no getting older in it, so... Uh, so Chip is still a child. Like, Chip it's is not a like child he was conceived in the cupboard. Which, for some reason, I mean, you should hear this in its voice, but when he, he turns at the end of the movie, Emma Thompson seems shocked that he's still a little boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, I, I think she oh, even sorry, says, like, you're still a little boy. And it's like, well, <sighs> do you do not listen to his voice for the past however many <laughs> years? <laughs> she's a teapot. She don't have this. <laughs> but, so I have the... The other thing that's weird that I think will eventually be like a weird drinking game is drink every time that Mrs. Potts sounds like a serial killer. She sneaks in and says a lot of weird stuff. And it just is very like abductee. I don't know. It made me nervous. Emma Thompson as Mrs. Potts should have been like great, a natural great thing. Um, And it was not. Her voice is so soothing to me. It's like, you know, I, I love her in almost everything she well, does. Well, um, the, the, uh, the Mary Poppins movie. The Old Travers. Y- y- she yeah, plays she was great. in Saving Mr. Banks. Yeah. Amazing in this. She's Why got she a just great talk like English that? accent, but for some reason she puts on the worst British Cockney accent that has ever been put down on film since Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> and the sad part is, with him, at least he was an American. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. That's, she's that's already the weirdest British. choice of all of it. But And you can tell she's trying to be Angela Lansbury. She's trying to mimic that voice. So who was but your why? favorite um, of the of the of the Ian uh, servants? Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say I think Ian McKellen's Cogsworth. I think that Ian McGregor did a good job of trying to be the Lumiere. Like he's yes, being but Lumiere. I hated it. <laughs> his his accent is weird, but it was it's like, way over the top. Yeah, it, but it, it but matches. it's clearly like he read the atmosphere of yeah. what was going on, and he was like, "I'm going to be true to this movie." Yeah, no, he said this. This movie is ridiculous and over the top. Well, I'm just going to act that way too. Yeah, and he went with it. So I guess props to him. Uh, but Ian McKellen's my favorite is Cogsworth, yeah. but he is not utilized at all. I feel like he was this big name they wanted to attach. 
because he worked with uh, Bill Condon on Mr. Holmes. And, well, and uh, the other, the um, monsters, gods and monsters. Yes, gods like and monsters. Yeah. Because they had that relationship, they were able to pull him in for the name. But I, I feel like where he was Lumiere less in the movie was, than he normally yeah, was. Lumiere like, was like used as much as possible. Cogsworth was there, but might not have as many lines or no lines at all. Uh, What's his girlfriend's name? Dramat? Uh, the, 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 the French... Yeah, the, the bird yeah, duster they that had a, flew around. I just, yeah, it was like a flying... It was That, that was a weird choice, too. The um, wardrobe was constantly obnoxious. Uh, <laughs> the harpsichord that was Stanley played Tucci. by Stanley Tucci, and I guess I missed that one entirely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> But it was it was a weird okay. So I want to talk about a little bit about the production design too. I have this issue with that. Yeah. Um. So it's a lot of like really big like they try to do these grand sweeping shots of like here's the castle and then we're gonna pull back and we're gonna go to the town and um it like the town is clearly the only real existing set. It, it yeah. was built on a soundstage and it looks like that and it reminds me of the brandy version of Cinderella they did a couple of years ago that was a remake of like the Leslie M. Warren version from when I was a kid but um, it and that was fine I was fine with that set now, honestly I wish everything had that been set, a set looked right because when you go to the castle there's a lot of corridors in this castle that literally are built they're just ledges there is no yeah. edge to it but they're, it's and not the castle, consistent either as, as the rose petal falls parts of the castle do crumble yeah. off so I guess there's that but there's just a lot of inconsistencies with well, with Belle, the design yeah, of the when castle. When Belle shoves her father when she's taking his place, I, I thought she goes for the shove, and I'm like, oh dear God, he's gonna fall down that ledge. That yeah. they, literally the shot was just an overhead looking down, and he's gonna fall down, and it was not the case. Uh, there was a wall all of a sudden, and it happens later in the finale of the film. They're hopping from like peak to peak to peak, and the beast with you know with the beast and Gaston and everything and they're jumping around and it just seems like I don't like when the the uh, location isn't it, it's it, yeah. I feel like a, a sign of a good storyteller is you're able to there's really there's not that continuity exactly so. there's no location continuity uh, and yeah I'll just I'll take that up another notch I just hated the the design entirely as I said before all of the character design I think is just it was too atrocious. much. I think it was atrociously was... bad. It just it didn't look right at all, and that goes along with the whole design of the castle too. It just it was just like it was very said, rounded, very sweeping, very bizarre. They, like I don't think it could have been created. They just said our entire budget is being spent on CGI and the yeah. talent. Yeah. So we got the talent in for a good price. Now go crazy on CGI. Do whatever you would want yeah. to see. And that's the problem. When you start giving people too much freedom on these things, and we know as people who make videos all the time, when you start giving too much freedom and you don't learn how to reel it in, yeah. that's when you get just too much. I, I think more of Avatar was real than was shot <laughs> in this movie. Um, I, I, so um, what did you think about the look of the beast? Oh, no. There's Literally, a scene no where he care. gets wet like, and I'm like... I, I, okay, there are some scenes where I'm like, oh, he looks fine, he looks good. Uh, like, you know, it's fine. I accept what he looks like because we're watching the movie and I can't change the design of characters, so I try to accept it as I'm watching it. But there's moments in the movie where I'm like, oh, dear God, did they not finish the CGI in this yeah, part? Yeah, he had that weird motion blur to it that it just, it didn't, it didn't look right. It yeah. just didn't look right. I hated all the characters. The only character that I liked in terms of looking at them was probably I like Emma Watson as Belle yeah like I mean I like Emma Watson a lot anyway well, yeah, so I don't blame well, her no, for I, but I was trying to think of I, I liked Cogsworth the best oh, I think oh Cogsworth, well, you're looking at yeah. for those no, characters of course, okay, yeah. I, of course I like the look of Emma Watson and I already said that Luke Evans well, looks great Cogsworth, Cogsworth was Lefou probably does. the most um, close to the original yeah like the modeled after the original he was just slightly like, steampunkish the, yeah. the rest of the characters had a lot of extra flourishes um yeah it just yeah it just it it didn't look right for me and when and when you can't when you can't believe the character design in it it's hard to really get involved in the entire movie and start to feel it. This movie also felt like it was kind of like whenever somebody was like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we did this? They were like, yeah, throw it in, throw it in, throw it in. Because 
So toward the finale of the film, when the mob breaks into the castle, they're um, there, and one of them's like, this seems familiar. And you're like, oh, God, what are you doing? And so I'm, I'm thinking, like, the town is part of the spell or something like that. And oh, yeah, They it never is. really clarify that, though. Yeah, they, oh, wait, and on that note, too, don't let me forget about the, the enchantress. We have to talk about oh, yeah, her. Oh, yeah, we will. But, but, yeah, so anyway, so then it comes to find out Mr. Potts is there, is apparently in the town and he's yeah. forgotten he had a wife and child yeah, and they, vice versa so this whole mob comes to town and some of them are a part of the the, the, the family of the, the servants and they get in there and they're you know ready to murder yeah. this person and, that's different than them and, and you start well you start to get the first idea that the town is unaware of this because when uh, Maurice ends up at the castle it's because lightning strikes, hits a tree, blocks the path, and it's like divine intervention that he goes down the path yeah, that leads to the, the castle. the tree's back. But then he later. goes to take Gaston and LeFou to uh, the I castle see, yeah. again, and he sees the tree that was struck, but it's intact, and there's no path back there. Yeah. So it's, it's not, they can't find the way back until, of course, Gaston uses the mirror to say, you know, where's the castle? Show me to the beast, and then they are able to start making their way back there but um, it is like oh well it's just a race from existence because it's a huge freaking castle and it's very close obviously it's just a walk away that's why they're able to get there (laughs) just very rapidly yeah so I mean it's there's a, that's and again, there's a hill they're always up dancing on in the movie every now and then like Belle runs up like it's the sound of music at one point and you're like she you doesn't see the castle and from that, well and that's from that is obviously from the animated the same getting on the hill and having the big part of the Belle reprise except in this one and maybe my I'm just I haven't watched the animated one in a couple years so I'm not as fresh on it but literally from this she finishes one line and then it builds up the orchestra. And then she is nowhere near the town when she's on top of the <laughs> You're hill. You're like, man, like, she can. Re- she's like, I just got to run a quick five miles away and and do my uh, it's my like reprise. She on turned the hill. into Dash from The Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> she zipped up there and I want adventure <laughs> in the great wide somewhere. You think it actually takes her probably like eight hours to sing one song because yeah. she moves from location <laughs> to location, two <laughs> lines, two lines. It's what they do uh, in a small town. So Maurice in the beginning even says like, it's a small-minded town, but small-minded means safe, which clearly is not true because these small-minded people turn on the thing that's different and they say that in the movie that's why they're after him is because they're different and they don't understand what's different yeah. then in the end they they learn their loved ones are actually these animated objects and for some reason they're all redeemed immediately where i'm like you yeah. are just gonna murder everyone like and i did not like the inclusion of that it was just stupid to do that like just if the townspeople had left and given up and just we'd never heard from them again yeah. i would have been fine that would have been fine with me i thought yeah. I thought this whole movie was aiming toward Belle leaving this town because she talks about that. They bring up Paris a lot. There's this whole backstory with her mother dying of the plague in Paris. And, yeah, and this was where they added in this strange, bizarre book that the Enchantress gives book. them that is, you know, they have the mirror, obviously. You can see her crew what you trick. ask for, yeah. but then there's this book, and it can apparently just transport you anywhere you want with other elements to it so they touch the book and Belle gets to go to Paris and see see her mother and find out the whole mystery behind it. Well she doesn't see it. the mother. The mother's she dead. Doesn't. She gets like the but, memory somehow. Yeah she gets the memory and finds this stupid little rose. and That she kisses and you're like the plague the was plague on that rose. On that. <laughs> oh yeah that, that's it. The beast finds the mask in there that was oh, used yes, by the, the plague the doctors. Doctor, the doctor's um, mask. And And so it's like, oh, well, she died of the plague. Maurice had to take her away because she had the plague. I did did have to research after. The plague did come back around uh, all the way through the 1800s and stuff, and I believe it's still available in some country. Available to get. Available (laughs) available for purchase. Uh, I believe you can still capture it in places. Dan Brown. But I I just... it just seemed like I would have rather not known anything about. Why didn't they burn it to the about. ground when she died? Yeah. Is all I'm like, or, or why? Like, why wasn't the skeleton of the mother there? Or, you yeah. know, it was a weird. <laughs> so it was many weird. Questions. A lot of weird inconsistencies for no backstory. There's a really quick backstory given to the beast that he had a really terrible father. Yeah, and it was delivered in about three or four lines of dialogue, and I was like, that's what the backstory should have been. Yeah, his was done correctly. Um, and you know, when he's like naked beast for some bizarre reason but um but it's like 
there's a lot of that. I, I don't like... So we have to talk about the Enchantress really quick, too. I'm, we're running out of time. But um, the Enchantress is a character in the film because they talk about a spinster yeah. in the town. And then they talk about... there's When Maurice is left to die by Gaston, Gaston. at one point in the woods, um, Agatha, this homeless woman who lives in a branch, a tree or something, helps him. He says, thank you. He comes back to town. Whatever. She goes with the mob later to the castle and she just kind of walks through all the chaos. And you're like, where's Agatha going? And... Um, and she goes right up into the... She's never acknowledged, really. Yeah. As she walks into the East Wing, the West Wing, like the TV show. Yeah. And she goes right up to the Rose, you know, that whole end scene. And she, like, the energy flows out of her and everything turns back to normal. But nobody's like, thanks, Agatha. Yeah. It's a weird, like, they acknowledge her, but they don't acknowledge yeah. her. And I don't know why they chose to do that. There's a lot of weird decisions like that. Yeah. Like, well, your thoughts on Be Our Guest. Okay, yeah, so there's a lot of... My issue was, is I was looking forward to, like, having big dance numbers and stuff. Be Our Guest, it felt like the focus wasn't the song. It was what Lumiere was doing. And so there was no... I felt like it undermined the actual song. Because I, I don't mind the version of Be yeah. Our Guest in the movie, but it's just, like, it it didn't have... It was one of those, like, okay, when I watch it, it's going to be this... That's the biggest number. I mean, that essentially is the essential Beauty and the Beast number from this movie. And it kind of, like, brought it down. It didn't... Yeah. It was too much about being like, oh, I, this silly candlestick. And then it became very bizarre. Yeah, it just CGI swimming, over the, the place. The things, the yeah. cleaning people were swimming and it stuff was, that you're like, it was what ridiculous. are you swimming in? And then I feel the same way kind of about, in a different way, for uh, Beauty and the Beast. First off, Emma Thompson, why were you singing like that again? Yeah. And why was her Say face... Why didn't she have a mouth? Time. She had a mouth painted on. Every other character, though, inanimate objects had real mouths. Yeah. Except for her. What the heck? But... This was the, the most beautiful sequence in in Beauty and the Beast, the animated version. This one was so completely underwhelming. Yeah. Nevermore. It should never happen ever again. The song. Terrible song sung oh, by the Beast. Oh, you didn't like the Beast song? It, there was not a single song in the movie I found to be like, this This should go down in time. It was bad. I'm, and I'm done with this. I do not. I yeah. will not tell anyone to not go see it. And no, I, if you enjoy uh, yeah, it, I will not say you're it, wrong. Yeah. I just, I think it's bad. I do not recommend it. I, I, it's, um, it just, it missed the mark in so many places. It's hard to be enjoyable. With that said, like, maybe I'm going to like it better the second time now that I know what to expect. Um, I, I don't know. It, it is one of those where I, I, I'm hoping they don't take this route with all the other movies that are coming in production, like Latin stuff. So, this you know. This felt like a step back. To Maleficent. Is, Maleficent. Yeah. They started so many. They started all these strives uh, with some of the other ones they've done with Pete's Dragon, with the Jungle Book. This felt like a step back. Yeah. So I, I, hopefully they get it, it lost the reimagining part. Yeah. It was pretty much just a remake, and so I think they need to really focus on that reimagining to bring something new to the table, especially these ones that are I would consider already a masterpiece of a film. Yep. You know, and so. So hopefully that continues. But if you're going to see it, let us know what you think. You can yell at us all you want in the comments. Let us know if we're wrong. Um, but that's just our feeling. I would rank this as better than the Alice movies. I think better than Maleficent, but, you know, I don't know. I'm one step below Maleficent in so. this, but better than Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, so let us know what you guys think. Let us know in the comments, on Twitter, Dispop Show, um, uh, you know, Facebook, whatever. I'd, I'm curious to see what you think and why you liked it so much. Um... And yeah, I don't know. know. Anything else? No, that's it. All right, well, thank you for checking out this review, and uh, we'll see you next time in the next episode of Diz Pop.